you see my screen. Okay, so today's daf is daf Yud Beis. We're going to start from Yud Aleph Amud Sheni. But before we get to the daf, I just to make it easy, I, I I think you can see my screen over here, and this is interesting. Today's daf is just because it dis, it basically um, uh, talks about a topic called constellations. Uh, we learned just yesterday that there was a machlokus. Uh, between Rabbi Lez and Rabbi Yeshua of when the world was created. Some say it was Tishrei. Uh, Rabbi Lez says it was Tishrei. The world was created in Tishrei. And Rabbi Yeshua says it was in Nisan. Now, that is very relevant because if that's Parshish Bereshish, but let's go to Parshish Noyach. When was the Mabel? Was the Mabel in Cheshvan, like around t- this month? Or was the Mabel, the Great Flood, was it in Eeyore? According to Rabbi Lezer, since the world was created in in, the, in Tishrei, the Mabel, according to him, happened in Cheshvan. It started in Cheshvan, in the 17th of Cheshvan, and it lasted a year, not exactly, a little bit more than a year, to the 27th of Cheshvan of the following year. That's the way Rabbi Lezer learns the Pasuk. And actually, the way he reads the Pasuk, the year turned to this, Noach turned 601 when the year Rosh Hashanah turned to uh, 601. Now, that was that was um, Rabbi Leza's opinion. So Rabbi Leza's opinion, the marble happened in Cheshvan. According to Rabbi Yeshua, the marble happened in Eeyore. And the world was created in Nisan. And the marble happened in Eeyore, 17th of Eeyore. And it ended in the 17th, in 27th of Eeyore. Fine. That's easy. What is, the, what, is, what, is, uh, what is more, what the Gemara is trying to get at is... It makes it perfectly sense, according to Rabbi, Yush- Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua, really, it's not the rainy season in Eir. Eir is, let's say, April, May, right? So it's May time, and it's not the, yet the rainy season. You know, you just finished April showers, now May flowers. And yet, at that particular time, the hurricane and the marble happened. So it was a complete out of order of nature. And that, that's the stress over here. God made an out-of-order nature, according to Rabbi Yeshua, by making it rain in the rainy in in May time in Eeyore. According to Rabbi Elezer, that the marble occurred in the marble occurred when in Cheshvan. So then, that's what the Gemara is going to discuss right now. We're almost going to start. Hi, Lewis. We just started. Okay, but as a way of one more point, and this is a very important point, And when we get off the uh, the learning, if you could just type into YouTube uh, to the, have the constellations explained to you, so you'll see it, you'll understand it uh, a lot clearer than I can explain it, but the const- in the ancient times um, they knew sunrise, sunset, and that that, that, order, that, that, um, that time mechanism but they didn't have a way to know whether you're fall or whether you're in the spring, because both fall and spring have equal you know you have you could have uh, equinox which is the uh sunrise is six o'clock in the morning and sunset is six o'clock in the evening so if you didn't know whether you're in the fall season or um or the spring season the yeshivas didn't send out the calendar yet so you didn't know so how did they know how did they figure this thing out so they had constellations they had a way of looking behind the sun and they would see formations in the stars in the heavens. And those formations turned out, they think, in their, in their, uh, uh, the way they looked at it, there were 12 formations. They, they formed different uh, pictures, so to speak. And uh, that's called the 12 constellations. And based on what was behind the sun, they knew what season they were in. So just briefly, um, there are each in... The, the way they determine the constellation, what season you're in, because every two hours, another constellation rises. But at the sunrise, if a particular constellation rises, that told you what month you're in. So in Nisan, let's say, uh, you're, on, you're, on the, you're on planet Earth. You see behind the sun, this tle, you see the mazel tle starts rising above the horizon. And then on the other side, Maznayim, Libra, goes, goes, goes bottom, goes, goes behind the planet Earth. So you can't see that. And every two hours, it changes. 
okay? Very important. Every two hours, it changes. So let's take a look at 8 o'clock in the morning. At 8 o'clock in the morning, Tle, the Mazel of Nisan, rose. So they knew it's, we're in Nisan time because Mazel. And notice at the tail of Mazel Tle, Aries, is something called Kima. That word is going to come up in the Gemara. And Kima was the, was the Mazel of, um, was the tail of, of Tle, the tail of the, of the Tle. Anyhow, so that's how it looked 8 a.m. in the morning, okay? Now let's look at it at 6 p.m. At 6 p.m., the Mazel Tle over here is, going to, is, is, is on its way to go, to go behind planet Earth. Okay, that's at 6 p.m. And then already at 8 p.m., it's already behind planet Earth. On the other side, the nighttime, Maznaim goes on. So what determined a month was the, the mazel that appeared early on in the morning. That determined the month, and they were able to determine what part of the season they're in. That's important. Um, the, the, one other thing you should know, of course, the, the rotation of, of the way, you know, the sun... We'll look at it as if the sun rotates around the earth. It's not true, but the, the, from our vantage point, it looks like the sun rotates around the earth. But this, the constellations move faster than the way the sun rotates around the earth. Therefore, every month, another constellation is rising uh, rising uh, at, at early on in the morning that was not the way it was in the previous month. So every Every month, it changes. The muzzle of that month changes. The constellation of that month changes. So now, let's just quickly go into the Gemara. Uh, okay, okay. Let me just go into one more page over here, so then, the, then we don't have to look at this anymore. But let's do Rabbi Yeshua first. According to Rabbi Yeshua, okay, when was the, when was the month of, when was the marble In the month of Eor, 17th day of Eor. And notice at ER time, the mazel, the mazel of Nisan is Tle. So Tle is already there. When it comes six o'clock in the morning, the mazel of Shor is starting to come up. This mazel of Shor is starting to come up. So that's how it works. So by 6 p.m., the mazel of Shor is coming down. Now, the, the, the part of Kima, that Kima, that's the tail, that really causes a, like a dryness. And usually at that time, it's the beginning of where the, the, the water inside planet Earth, the wells are lower down. They're not as full That's that, at that time. So if the marble came at that time, it must have been an out of order of nature because umayonis mismatin, the wells go lower. According to Abelazar, According to Ablazer, let's just quickly say it. That day was Shiva Asa B'Macheshwin. The 17th day of Macheshwin, the Mabel began. And that was the Mazel Kima was actually behind Earth. So that's called oil. It's, it's on its way. It's actually, it will take another six hours before it even gets to, you can see it on Earth. So in Macheshwin, because it's really behind planet Earth. And therefore, at that time, because Mazel Kima is not there, it's more of a rainy season, and the wells are getting stronger. So according to Abeleza, the Gemara is going to ask, if that's the case, then what is the great nace of, of making the Mabel in Cheshvan? It's a rainy season anyway. So that's it. That's all. The point is that they understood that the constellation stars have an effect on planet Earth. And if, if the, if, if based on what they knew about what the constellation is, then they didn't understand. Uh, they didn't understand. Let's just get this. Okay. Uh oh. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to start the Gemara and Yud Aleph, Omut Sheni. You got it? Va'ozdu Litameu. You see where I have my blue marker there? Va'ozdu Litameu. Rabbi Leza and Rabbi Yeshua go according to their reasoning and their opinion. How do you read the Chumash? The Tanya we learned in Abraisa. Beshna Shneis Me'ez Shona when Nechai Noach. Noach was 600 years old. Bachodesh Hasheni B'Shivasa Yom Lechodesh. The Torah says it was the second month on the 17th day of the month. Okay, that doesn't tell you exactly what season it was. So Rabbi Yeshua, I'm Rabbi Yeshua says, that particular day when the marble started, 
again, at first it rained for 40 days, and then the waters increased, the, the, the crust of the earth broke open and water came from the core of the earth and started to fill up the earth, uh, cover the earth. And that lasted 150 days until the highest mountains were covered. So Rabbi, Leza, Rabbi Shua says, I say, yam, yudzayim haya. It was the 70th day of year that when the marble started. Yom Shemazal Kima, the constellation called Kima, Shokea Bayom. The Mazal Kima is actually rising or on its way up in, at, at six o'clock in the morning. U, but because of that, Umayonois Misma'atin, because this Mazal is coming up or it's called setting because the word Shakea means setting, but because it's on its way to set. It just started its, its orbit, but it's on its way to set. Therefore, its power is to cause the mayonis, the wells, the inner core wells in earth, mismatim, to become lower. So, umitoich, since the people who lived at the Mabel, shishinu ma'aseim, they changed what the normal path, what does that mean, shishinu ma'aseim? We know that they cross bread. Uh, uh, the, they they did a mishkav zochar and mishkav there was uh, there was homosexuality and lesbianism and the, and even the animals were crossbreeding with uh, with not its its kind so because the whole world changed over shina hakadosh baruch hu the whole nature changed so normally it should have not been a rainy time so the hell's a mazel kima biyay mazel kima was uh, it, it looked like it was on the other side. Mazel Kima is not where it was supposed to be. And the Notal Shneke Chava Mikima got punctured two stars out of this constellation Kima. So, so to speak, there was a hole in the heavens and it poured down the heavy marble oilam. And then the marble came down. And we, you can read the Chumash. The Chumash says that the windows of heaven opened up. So, the, what the Gemara says is that two stars were punctured in this constellation of Kima, and that's how the marble came down to the world. Fine. Rabbi Leza, I met, Rabbi Leza says, we're on the bottom of Yud Aleph Cheni, two lines. Oisa Yarim, that day that the marble started was Yud Zayim B'Marcheshven Hoya. It was the 17th day of Marcheshven. Yoim, that day, Shemazal Kila Oyla B'Yoim. The Mazal Kila is actually, is actually behind Earth on its way to come up. And therefore, it's, since it's behind Earth, Therefore, it's a rainy season. The Mazel Kima is like dries things out, but this makes it a rainy season because it's behind the earth. And therefore, um, normally at that time, um, there's more water in the wells. The wells uh, are much more fuller at that particular time. So now the Gemara would go to Yudam al Aleph. So the Gemara continues, even according to Rabbi Eleza, um, because they did funny things, they changed the normal ways, as we explained. Shina HaKadosh Baruch Hu God turned around whole, the whole nature. The hell of Mazel Kila Bayim and brought Mazel Kima uh, during the day. I mean, in other words, they gave it a certain power. The Natal Shnei Chavim, he took out puncture two stars, the Haven Babel, and brought the Mabel to the world. So, as I explained to you moments ago, that according to Yeshua, it makes sense that it's not the rainy season. It's not a time when the wells, the core wells in earth are full. And yet, and yet, HaKadosh Baruch Hu changed around nature to make it such a way that the earth could potentially get, could get flooded. So that's the change. So now the Gemara is going to end. But according to Rabbi Leza, we still need to understand. So before that, the Gemara asked that question, the Gemara just does some house cleaning. So Gemara says, Bishlama, I understand very well the Rabbi Yeshua, according to Rabbi Yeshua, first of all, Hainu Sheni. That's why the Chumash calls it Sheni. Why? The, the, it was the second month. Well, who wrote the Chumash? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu always dates in the Chumash uh, after, if the first month is always Nisan, the second month is Ir. That's the way the Chumash always dates. So therefore, according to Rabbi Yeshua, it makes sense. Because Rabbi Shua says the Rosh Hashanah, the world was created in, in Tishrei, and Shani is, is the second month after creation. El Rabbi Leza, my Shani. Why do you have call it Shani? Again, even though according to Rabbi Leza, it's the second month from creation, 
But Moshe Rabbeinu was writing the Torah, and therefore, Shani usually in the Torah is after Nisan, because Nisan is when we left Mitzrayim. So Shani always was here. So according to Amlezer, what does it mean, the word Shani? So the Gemara says, what it meant is Shani Ledin. The Torah wanted to emphasize that this is the second month after the judgment was initiated. In other words, God judges the world on Rosh Hashanah. And that year, he decided he's going to destroy our, our planet. And therefore, this was the second month after the initial judgment went forth from Hashem. That's why it says the word Shani. Again, even according to Abeleza, normally the dating of Rish and Shani in the Chumash, since it's written by Moshe Rabbeinu or, or Al-Pi Hashem, it always dates Rish and Shani after Nisan. But this is the exception, because it wants to emphasize that God made a specific, specific judgment to destroy the earth at that time. So now the Gemara asks the question that we've led up to. Bishlam and Rabbi Yeshua, according to Rabbi Yeshua, Hainu Deshina, I understand very well how God changed the world, because really it's a time when the wells are not loaded, not full, and God made it that uh, he turned around the constellation so that the wells can overflow and flood earth. El Rabbi Lazar, Maishina, what is the great change? It's, it's the beginning of the winter season or the end of fall, beginning winter. That's the time when the water, when the water is inside the core, the wells are full. So what is the great change that God made by the flood? So the Gemara says, God made a special change because normally water from the core of the earth should be cold. So because of these wells. And here the water was hot. Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda says, kilkilu. They uh, destroyed themselves. The people of the Doramabal destroyed themselves by doing something hot. In other words, they, they according to Rashi, means they, they uh, ejaculated semen without any purpose. And that's a big Avera. So that's called Moitzi Shech Vazera Levatala. And because that semen generally is, is, is hot, so therefore, Baroischen Nidoinu. What does that mean? That the water of the Mabal was hot water. So that's what the Gemara says. Baroischen Kikalu. They destroyed themselves with hotness, Ba'avera, through the Avera of Znus. But basically, it means not procreating, wasting the seed, so to speak. And Baroischen Nidoinu. And God punished them with hot. How do you know it was hot water? Siv Hocha, it says in the Parshas Noach, by Yeshoiku Hamoyim. The water cooled. How do you know by shoku means cooled? Because it says by Megillus Esther that King Ahasuerus' rage or anger shakacha subsided after the death of Haman. So the word shakacha means cool off. So by shoku hamayim, the waters of the marble started to cool off. So it didn't cool off unless it was hot, and that's how, according to Rabbi it wasn't a change in the constellations, but it was a change in the water, in the temperature of the water that came at the marble. Tana Rabbana, the rabbis taught, Chachme Yisrael Moinin Lamabel Kirabeleza. When when the Chachme Yisrael were reading the Mabel story, they they interpreted the story like Rabbi Lezer, that the Mabel began in Cheshvan and ended in Cheshvan. But Velatakufa Kirab Yeshua. But when it comes to determining the creation of the world, to understand when seasons begin, they learned, like Rabbi Yeshua, that God created the world in Nisan. Now, what's the difference when God created the world? We, we forgot to mention this, but what's the difference? What do you need to know? What, uh, was, it, was it Nisan or was it Tishrei when God created the world? Well, this comes up in Halakha of the once in 28 years, we should live and be well and get there again, uh, that you make the Barqa Sachama. And there, you make the Birch HaSachama, usually in, we make it in the springtime, because we say that was the exact location at the time of creation. So that if you, if you go through the, the calculations, the calculation of where the sun was at the time of creation on a Wednesday, because it's always on a Wednesday, God created the sun on a Wednesday. So that's where we make this bracha. So it's important to know what was the first season, and who do you pass like Rabbi Yeshua or Rabbi or Rabbi Elazar? So the, for the Jewish people, Chachmei Yisrael paskin basically like Rabbi Yeshua, that the world was created in Nisan. But when they read the Chumash, they read the Mabel story like Rabbi Elazar. Chachmei Umar Sa'olam, 
but uh, the scientists of the world, Chachmei Yerushalayim is basically uh, non-Jewish scientists, Moinin Af Lamabel Krebi They agree, they agree that, uh, the, that, um, that this world was created in this and like Rabbi Yeshua. But they say the Mabel story happened like Rabbi Yeshua. Okay, so even when they study the Bible uh, and they believe the story of Noah, they interpreted that the Mabel happened in, uh, in ER. Fascinating Gemara that we just uh, uncovered. But I, like I say, if you want to know more about the constellations and how it works, you can see like these three minute clips of videos explaining it um, uh, and how it, but today I think we don't even believe that there was 12 constellations. We believe, I think in science now, they, they, they have, uh, I think 88 si uh, constellations in the, in the, out there. Okay, but uh, that's that, that's that Gemara. The Gemara continues, Vele Yerokois. The Mishnah said that the Yerokois is the, the, the vegetables we know that the Rosh Hashanah for vegetables is Rosh Hashanah. What does that mean? That means you have to give a certain miser from every produce that was grown in your, in your field that, for that year. You can't say, I'm not going to give miser this year. I'll give double miser next year. No, you have to give the miser that grew in your field per year. And the, the new year for that is Rosh Hashanah for vegetables. Tana. We learned to the Brisa that explained Liyaraka is for vegetables, Ulumaisra is for giving off tithes, Vilindaram and for nedars. It's all the Rosh Hashanah is on the first of Tishrei. So the Gemara says, the Gemara explains the Brisa. The, the Brisa is more exp, uh, expanded on, the, on our Gemara, on the Mishnah. Liyaraka is my Ninhu. What is called Yaraka is, what does that mean? Masa Yerek. That means the Gemara says that for giving tithes of vegetables. So every year, the vegetables that grew, you have to give tithes and you have to give them 10%. But you can't combine and say, I'm not giving this year, but I'll give double next year. No, each year you have to give tithes from, from that year. So what determines the beginning of the year is Rosh Hashanah. So if that's the case, then why does the Bryce say, that's the same thing. Hainu That is, isn't that regular maestras? So the Gemara answers, Tana de Rabbonam. The Brisa mentions vegetables which are chayev in Maestros med Rabbonam because the Chumash, the Ketani de Raisa. And it also mentions items like wheat, right? Uh, which are chayev in Maestros med Raisa. So the Arrakis is vegetable. The Maestros is refers to Dogon, like wheat. And really, in the Chumash, it only says you should give a 10% from your wheat. The Gancha, the right? But, but uh, we, Midrabon, and they said you should give 10% also from your vegetables. So the, that's what it says. The Iraq is first with Maestras. So the Gemara's question is, we listen to the Raisa Let's Let it say Maestras first, because that's the, the, the mitzvah in the Torah is to give it from wheat, because that's what Maestras refers, and then say, talk about vegetables. Why does it reverse the order? So the Gemara Gemara answers that the Brisa did that is I did the Chavivele Akteme because it's beloved a uh, mitzvah the Rabbanam that's why I put it first mitzvah is the Torah that you know about but mitzvah the Rabbanam it wants to make you more aware that there's a mitzvah the Rabbanam to give maestros on vegetables. The Tana Didan our Tana mentioned no uh, uh, the Tana Didan. Why did it only, our Tana only said Yerakos? What about Maestros of Wheat? How come it didn't talk about Maestros of Wheat in our Mishnah? Tana de Rabbonan. Our Maestros only meant in vegetables, but you'll do the, you'll do the, your own uh, inference. And of course, the Koshke de Raisa, certainly de Raisa, the Rosh Hashanah for Wheat is also, the Maestros is also on Rosh Hashanah, on Aleph Tishrei. So now the Gemara says, what's the plural? The list name Maestros. Why does it say in the Brisa Maestros? Why, why, why did it just say maser as singular? Because isn't maser just wheat? So the answer is, echad, no, it's not just wheat. Echad maisne ya behema. The, the maser behema. Remember, we learned this in the, also in the Mishnah, that, that giving 10% of all the animals that were born in your flock as a korban, and the echad maser dark, and it's referring to the maser of wheat. So that's why it says maisrus, as, uh, 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 and that's why it says maisrus in the plural. So then the, the, we don't understand. The listen yarek. What, let it say vegetable, vegetable. Why does it say vegetables, in the plural? So the Gemara says, Trey, Gavne, Yarek, there are two types of vegetables. And that's now we learned in the Mishnah. Yarek, Hane, God, 
if you have a vegetable that normally you tie up, let's say scallions. So when are you not allowed to eat a snack on it? Remember, when you pick, a, when you pick vegetables and you pick fruits, you really allow a snack on them and not give off maestras until you've completed the process. So a vegetable that normally you put a, ba a rubber band around it, right? You tie it. So when is the completion of the process where you're not allowed to snack on it? Mishaya or gate. When you put a, when you, when you tie it together. Mishaya negot, a vegetable that you don't tie together like onions. So then when is the completed process is Mishaya Mali when you, when you harvest it and you fill up all the vessels, the carrying vessels with the onions, that's when you know you finished your process. Once they're all finished, then you, once they're all in their vessels, then you're not allowed to snack on it anymore. So that's regarding snacking on it. But so that's why the mission mentions that there are two types of vegetables. But nevertheless, they both, both of these types of vegetables have one Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah for that is Aleph Tishrei. And let's give the example. Tanur Abonim. Likid Yerek Erev Rosh Hashanah. If you pick the vegetable Erev Rosh Hashanah, let's say you picked a carrot, Okay. Before Rosh Hashanah, before sunder, sunset, you pick the vegetable. And then you collect it. Okay, we go to the next page. You, you, you collected another vegetable, another carrot, after Rosh Hashanah. Not on Rosh Hashanah itself, you're not allowed to pick, but you collected it, let's say, the day or two after Rosh Hashanah. So then they were picked in different years. So sometimes you can have not only that you can't give meisers from one to the other, but sometimes the, there's a different meiser that you're supposed to give off on, on one year as opposed to the next year. So the Braiser says, Ain't masrum is that, is that. You can't give trumas and meiser from one to another. Lefish ain't toimim masrum. You're not allowed to take off truma meiser. Loimim a chodesh al yashan. Not anything from the new year on the old year, but loimim a yashan al chodesh. Not from the old year on the new year. Each year, each year's harvest, so to speak, has to take off its own Trumas and Maestras. So even though you picked one carrot before Rosh Hashanah and one carrot after Rosh Hashanah, each carrot has to give off their own separate Trumas and Maestras. And furthermore, if the first year prior to Rosh Hashanah was a year two and, and of the Shemitah cycle, and after Rosh Hashanah, you began year three of the Shemitah cycle, so then you have to give off different Maestras for each carrot. Shnia, the second year, you're supposed to give Maestrasian, which is 10% to the levy, or and you're supposed to give off 10% where you're supposed to bring it up to Yerushalayim and, and eat it there. Shlishes, but in the third year, the carrot that was picked after Rosh Hashanah, Maserishin, you're supposed to give 10% to the levy, or Maisa Oni, but here, the 10%, instead of giving Maisa Shani in the third year, and again on the sixth year, that 10% is not what you bring to Yerushalayim. You're supposed to give it to poor people. So now, how do you know? How do I know that the, the, the maestros change year to year? So the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yeshua Belevi. The Pesach says, Kishchale l'ases komasa t'vascha b'ashon ha'shlishe sh'asa masa. The Torah says that on the third year, you, it's a year of maestros. B'ashon ha'shlishe sh'asa masa. Shona, so the third year, is she'ein bo el masa echad. It has one miser and doesn't have two misers. In other words, you give off miser oni, but you don't give off miser sheni. What does that mean? What, what's unique about the third year in the Shemitah cycle? Maserishan, you give off miserishan for the lady. That's always a given. Every year is supposed to give off miserishan. But here, uh, what takes the place of miser sheni is miser oni. You give 10% to poor people. Miser sheni, ye botel. And miser sheni, goes away, you don't have to take any 10% to bring it up to Yerushalayim. So the Gemara asks, Oy, no, maybe not so, maybe you don't even have to give off 10% to the Levi. Because notice the Pesach says that the third year is you give off one 10%, not two 10%. How do you know that even in the third year you have to also give to the Levi? Talmud Loimar, when the Torah talks about that the 10% you're supposed to give to the Levi, it calls it it's like an inheritance, right? So it's an inheritance. It's like a, 
family legacy, so to speak. So it's a certain uh, right that the levy has to take 10% from your produce. The Torah uh, juxtaposes or calls it an inheritance. Just like an inheritance has no interruption because your assets are passed to your children, to your grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, unless they sell it. Also, and this is something that you can't sell. So, and the Torah says there's no interruption. Every year you're supposed to give off my serishan. And so therefore, what's the only miser that gets uh, pushed aside on the third year? Miser Shani. And what takes its place? Miser Oni. The Tanya Idah Kiskala Lasa Masa, the another Brisa explains it differently. Shonash Ainbo Elamasa Echad. It's a year that only had one Misa. Okay, it said, how's that possible? My Sarisha no my Sani. You give my Sarisha my Sani, or my Shashani Yabako. Same idea. Yochol af my Sarisha nami Yabako. Maybe I might think in the third year you don't have to give off my Sarisha. Tamad Loima, here it brings another Pasuk. Uvo Halevi. The Levi could come to your to your uh, field and take his 10%. The Torah says, Uvo Halevi. He comes. Kosman Shaba, Tainloi. Anytime he comes, you have to give him. So it means that the levy could come in any year of the Shemitah cycle and take his part. So that, that Miser, Miserisha, never goes off. The only thing is you have to give Miser Ani, give Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Leza ben Yaakov says, Ain't it sarach? You don't even need that Pasek. We have the Pasek that we mentioned before. The Levim, you should speak and tell them that when they take from the Bnei Yisrael as a Maser, their 10%, says God, I gave it to them, me'itam, from the Jewish people, benachalaschem, in their inheritance. So, the Pesach compares what you give to the Levi as an inheritance. Just like an inheritance has no interruption, has no interruption. So, again, so getting back to our story over here, a guy picked a bunch of carrots before Rosh Hashanah and picked a bunch of carrots after Rosh Hashanah. So certainly you have to give off Maestras separately. But not only that, sometimes if it was this year two, going into year three, the first carrots that you picked before Rosh Hashanah, you're going to give Maestras Shani. The second carrots that were picked after Rosh Hashanah, you're going to give Maestras Ani. In either case, in each year, you're still, you're still going to have to give, uh, uh, you're still going to have to give a Maestrasian to the lady. One more small piece of Gemara, Vilenadoram. It's with promises, Rosh Hashanah is considered a, a, a new year. What does that mean? Tana Rabbonim. Hamuda Hanoa Mechaberi Lushona. Guy makes a, a nether to his friend. I'm not going to have any benefit from you for a year. So then, let's say he says it November 1st. So then, He has to count 12 months, and the next time he can have benefit from his friend is next year, November 1st. But he said, I'm only, I want to have no benefit from you only for this year. Even if he only made this promise on the 29th day of Elo. So as soon as the first day of Tishrei comes, also the year is over. So if he made a promise that I'm not going to have any benefit from you from the 29th of Elo and this year, so then, then the promise only lasts for one day and the Rosh Hashanah takes away the promise. Because there is an opinion that says one day a year is not considered a year. In order to be considered a year, you need 30 days. But when a person makes a nether, he is, all his goal is, is to have one day where he has no benefit from his friend. And therefore, at the end of the, at the at the bottom line is that for for a little bit of time, he got uh, he got pained. In other words, he was not benefiting from his friend, and that's the point. So therefore, even though he said the word shanazu, it's not we don't need him to have thirty days. But even if it was 29th day of Elo, if he had a little bit of time where he wasn't benefiting from his friend, his nether had was was mekuyim, and he kept his promise. And that's enough. Now the Gemara asks one more last question. When a guy says, I'm not going to benefit from my friend for this year, 
how do you know he means Rosh Hashanah? Maybe he means Nisan, the Ema Nisan. Maybe he means Nisan time. How do you know that when he says, I'm not benefiting you from this year, and that means he's not promises not to benefit from his friend up until Rosh Hashanah. How do you know? Maybe he means Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Because we learned that according to some, the world was created in Nisan. And says the Gemara, Benedarim Halech Achal L'Shem Bnei Adam. It's very important. With a neder, it doesn't matter what its technicals are. How do people speak? When an average person, you say Rosh Hashanah, he knows what you mean. The Yom Hadin Aleph Tishrei. He doesn't mean Aleph Nisan. And so therefore, when a person says, I promise I'm not benefiting from him, from my friend, he really means I'm not benefiting up until this year, when this year ends, which is Aleph Tishrei. That's what he says. It's interesting that in davening, and I'll just end with this, in davening, let's say Erev Rosh Hashanah, you're davening Mincha, and you say to God, Borech Oleinu Hashem Alekeinu Es Hashanah Zeis. Bless me this year. It's the 29th of Elul. What's there left of the year? And how do you, how does that fit into the tefillah? That you're davening Mincha, and you're saying, Borech Oleinu Hashanah Zeis. So first of all, God can make anything happen in a moment, and that, you know, you can have a windfall in that final Mincha, Erev Rosh Hashanah, and uh, that's could be your whole bracha for the entire year. But more more so, like you see in our Gemara, Hashanah Azois means up until Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't mean the whole year. Up until Aleph Tishrei. And that's why you can say, Baruch Aleinu Rosh Hashanah Azois, even Erev Rosh Hashanah. Okay. Very interesting. Very, yes, so it's a lot there, but if you want to get more information, you got to uh, just type into Google constellations and you get the little hang of what was going on here. Don't forget to put it on YouTube. I want to review a bunch of things on tonight's nice year. Sure, yeah. sure, I will. As a Hashem. Enjoy that. I left off by Hossam, which is, you see it over here on the screen, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tanan Hossam. In the bottom? Awesome. Yeah, turn of Yud Bey's Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. Have everyone a good Shabbos. Shikoya, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos.